Thank you, Doctor. I, I definitely get where you're coming from. Uh, you see a lot of things that most people never see. Uh, Mayor, uh, what percentage of uh, violent deaths involving a firearm in uh, your city are a result of handguns versus rifles? Do you know? Thank you, Senator. In um, 2012, uh, unfortunately, we had uh, 331 murders uh, in the city of Philadelphia. And pretty consistently over the last uh, 10 years or so, uh, murder has uh, been committed with a, a gun uh, or other handgun or uh, rifle uh, type of weapon, uh, usually anywhere from 82 to 85 percent of the murders in Philadelphia are committed with a gun. But, but you don't know of, uh, just nationally, according to the 2011 numbers, 2.5% uh, of homicides were committed with some form of a rifle. You think that's vastly different in Philadelphia? And, and I know you don't, I mean, I, I know. Well, I do, I do have some numbers, Senator. Um, I think the thing, so I'm not going to talk about the national picture. Yes, sir. Uh, 331 murders in Philadelphia last year, 282 were committed with a uh, handgun, two with a uh, shotgun. This year we've had 31 murders. Uh, which is actually 37 percent down a uh, year-to-date compared to last year, 25 with handguns, two with a shotgun, including, uh, unfortunately, uh, yesterday morning, Jennifer Fitzpatrick, 37 years old, mother of four, mm -hmm. was killed by her ex-boyfriend in front of her four-year-old mm -hmm. with a 12-gauge shotgun yeah. after chasing her down the street and shooting uh, repeatedly uh, after her. Right. Um, so gun violence, uh, certainly in Philadelphia and many of our major cities across the United States of America, uh, I would only suggest, uh, Senator, um, you know, handgun, rifle, shotgun, dead is dead. Well, uh, and uh, that's what's uh, being experienced in our cities all across America. I couldn't agree with you more, but the reason we have hearings like this is try to paint the picture for America of the problem we're trying to solve. Right. And uh, I don't know what percentage of deaths are caused by rifles in Philadelphia, but oh, nationally it's 2.5 percent. Mr. Hardy, uh, you've done some uh, research on American ownership of the AR-15, is that correct? Uh, yes, sir. Under the uh, Heller definition, do you think it would be a commonly used or a commonly a weapon in common use at the time? Senator, I believe it would clearly be a weapon in common use at the time. Uh, the first one, the first uh, bit of research I included was that approximately 22 percent of all American uh, rifle production at the moment is devoted to the AR-15 AR platform. Excuse me, that's the minimum. Those are companies that only make AR-15s. Then you've got the other companies that make uh, that plus some other arms. Now, uh, back to the background check. Uh, Chief Lynn, uh, I think, <coughs> made a very interesting observation that he's not into chasing paper. And I guess my point is, if you have 76,000 people fail a background check and only 13 people plead guilty, I'm not so sure we're sending the right signal to our, to our citizens at large that we're really serious about you trying to get a gun illegally when you only have 13 guilty pleas out of 76,000. And here's a stunning number, uh, Madam Chairman. 19% of the people who failed a background check uh, were fugitives, fugitives from justice. I mean, that's 13,862 people, apparently, in 2012 failed a background check because they were a fugitive from justice. And my point is that if we're only, we should be going after those folks. No matter how you feel about guns, we should be going after those folks. Uh, from a background check point of view, do you, is this legislation, uh, Mr. Hardy, that you understand, is, would it require a background check if I sold the gun to my neighbor? Uh, I don't know that this bill specifically okay. relates to that, but I've, the proposals I have seen would say yes, you okay. would be required to do a, go through a dealer. All right. Now, Ms. Adams, about self-defense, are you familiar with a case in Atlanta, I think it happened probably a month or two ago, where, it, where a person, a man, uh, entered the house with a crowbar, just gotten out of jail, the mother was at home with two twin daughters, I think. She took the daughters up to the second floor and hid in a closet. Uh, the intruder followed up and uh, opened the closet door. She had a six-shot revolver. She was on the phone with her husband. 
she emptied the gun, hit him five or six times, and he was able to, to get in his car and drive away. Uh, in a situation like that, would you object to the mother having a 20-round clip? No. And I am familiar with it. I heard about it like many mothers and grandmothers. Uh, and a, as a law enforcement officer, the question I had was if he followed them upstairs, sought them out when he had full access to any valuables downstairs, what was his intent? Well, we'll never know what he was up to because it, it, it ended in a way where the family was safe. And we all agree that no one who is mentally unstable or a criminal should have one bullet with any gun. And the whole point here is try to make sure that we balance keeping guns out of the hands of the wrong people without also recognizing the, the Second Amendment. I would suggest that in some situations, six bullets is not enough for a person defending their family. And one bullet in the hands of the wrong person is way too many. And that's what we're trying to accommodate here. Now, one last thing, and I'm try to wrap this up. There's a debate about self-defense here, Mr. Hardy. Um, if you had a lawless situation, let's say there's a natural disaster somewhere. Unfortunately, these things happen. There are three homes. There's a home without a gun, there's a home with a shotgun, and a home with an AR-15. If there's a gang roaming around the neighborhood, what home do you think is best protected <coughs> in a situation like that? I'd say in that situation, Senator, an AR-15, the one with the AR-15, but you don't even have to go to a hypothetical. I've been in a situation where you needed it. It's anywhere along the border. I, I live uh, about 60 miles from the Mexican border. I was within five miles of the border with a rancher uh, working on a court case. Uh, the rancher had a, a pistol, his wife had a pistol, I had a pistol, and he had an AR-15 in the car, and I felt distinctly underarmed. I mean, well, I had one. If you encounter a, a drug cartel gang coming through, you're going to need more than that. And I will just end this yeah. by saying that, that and Vice President Biden has made the case, and I think he's very sincere, that <clears throat> to his wife, if you live in a wooded area, you got a double barrel shotgun to ward off the bad guys, go outside and fire a couple of shots. And he also made the case to a gentleman from California, if there's a natural disaster, the shotgun is a preferred weapon over the AR-15 for self-defense. And I would just say that reasonable people can disagree on that. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Th thank you, Senator.